Between these iconic hedges, the field where some of college football's greats have called home. Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, where these fans are ready to turn the dogs loose. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see a squad from the SEC, the Auburn Tigers, taking on the number one team in the land, the Georgia Bulldogs. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, let's get this thing started. Georgia about to kick it off to get us underway. He'll start the return inside his five. Good job by the coverage unit to put a stop to that return. The Tigers' return team didn't help matters out much there. This rivalry is intense, guys, but with all of the connections between the two, it's more like a family feud more so than a bitter war. And for example, about the connections, Reese, how about Vince Dooley, longtime Georgia coach? He went to Auburn. How about great player Pat Dye, All-American in Georgia? Coaches at Auburn, the connections are real, the rivalry is real. This crowd bringing the energy and noise early. Out of the gun, the give to the back. Picks his way ahead. He'll get five out to the 17-yard line. I like this guy as a running back because he can run between the tackles and he can also go outside. He can really do it all. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. Trying to make that rush think on the draw play here. And he converts on third down as he gets it out to the 26. It's a really good sign if you're on offense here. You're putting it on your offensive line on third down. Critical down and distance, opening drive of the game. Let those guys fire off, get a hat on a hat. You can run the ball, pick up the first. You're around midfield. And all things looking pretty good here early for this offense. To the air, it's Thorne. Fires to the wideout. He's got it. Really nice job there by both guys to throw and the catch to work that defense and get the first down. And I love the awareness by the wide receiver on that play because I'm not sure that route was supposed to be that deep. You got to wonder if the receiver decided maybe to adjust the route a little bit to make sure that he got the first down. They're going to run it. Able to scrounge three yards out of that one somehow. It's second and seven. Guys, only Minnesota and Wisconsin have played more often than Auburn and Georgia. This rivalry is rich in tradition. And you're right, Reese. This goes back to 1892. A long time. This game has been heated. You know a bunch of the names, a bunch of the storylines. And speaking of storylines, how about the mascot for Georgia? Literally trying to bite an Auburn wide receiver. That's how real this rivalry is. Well, you live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. That time, the defense called it at the perfect time. The linebacker able to make the stop on a short game. And yeah, from the offense's perspective, that's probably uh, making a little something out of nothing. A chance to sort of put the defense on its heels if you convert a third and long. This one from the 44. And he got smacked just as he released the pass. It's incomplete. You just got to wonder, too, guys, if the crowd didn't impact the offense. They're playing on the road on the first third down of this football game. Incomplete. The idea here, I think, just punt it away and see if you could regroup because this environment is hostile. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He'll bring it back. It's Evans. Was looking for more running room, but found nothing but more tacklers. He's down at the 24. The Bulldogs offense will go to work for the first time today. Here are our impact players for this game, and it goes beyond executing an assignment to make an impact in the game. Yeah, obviously we were talking to both coaching staffs this week, and we asked them who needs to step up and play well. They immediately pointed to these guys right here. They are the key for their respective teams. Yeah, and they don't always show up in the box score, but these are the guys that are the leaders. These are the guys getting everybody organized and have to play well for their team to succeed. 
good spot after that seven yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. He'll ride his man on the option. He'll pitch it. And they'll ride him down, but not before he picked up the first down. And how about the timing on that pitch? And the dogs hunkering down to pick up a first down on the ground. And you can hear the sound of Larry Munson. Run the dang ball. That's what they've always built this program on, is running the football, physical running backs. That's what Georgia does. From the gun, they'll try to impose their will. They can rely on this guy to pick up solid yardage when they need it, and he's out to the 43. The Bulldogs pulled one out of the fire and beat Auburn in a close one the last time these two met. Yeah, it was a really good one in the Deep South's oldest rattle. You've seen so many great games in this matchup, and that was one of them. But Georgia came away with it, and Auburn got to think about that for a whole year. Well, that is one the tight end is going to want to have back. He was wide open on that play. That's one he's got to make. He's got to be able to make that catch. They have it at the 43, third and short, trying to avoid making a decision on fourth down. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Quarterback touch pass on the jet sweep. He ended up losing yardage on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. That's a great job executing up front by the defense. They looked like they were ready for that play, and that was a bit of a more unconventional look from the offense on third down, but the defense was there to make a big stop. Georgia sent out the punt team. This will be their first punt of the afternoon. And you make the stop, and that is exactly what you want out of your punt cover unit. Now here comes that Auburn offense onto the field again. David, the punter got some work last time. They'd like to keep him on the sidelines in this drive. Yeah, and it's not something you want to say very often. You don't want the punter out there. This offense needs to get back lathered up and get a little bit more of a rhythm. Best way to do that, identify where your best players are and just get them the football. Give these guys some touches to kickstart this offense. They got nothing on the last play. It's second and ten. Back to pass. It's Thorne. Using the quick game. Well, when you're running the drag route against man coverage like that, as a quarterback, you've got to put the ball out in front of your target. When you do that, you give the guy a chance to then advance the football up the field, pick up a first down like they did right there. Facing a third down and short from the 26. From the gun, wants to pass. Caught, close to the marker, it's Coleman. They'll keep this drive moving by picking up the first down. They have it at the 36. And on that third and short, I don't think he was unhappy to see that zone. Nope, it's a great job by the offense. Hey, see where the holes in the zone are? Sit down. You only need a little bit of yards on this third down. Get the conversion. Move the sticks. Well, jet sweep pass. Pretty good effort on that one to work his way up to the 42. And these little touch passes, man, they're just the easiest completions ever for quarterbacks. Palmer, I bet you would have loved being able to just flip it forward. That counts as to your completion percentage, which is good. And then it's all run after the catch, so pretty easy for a QB. You wouldn't have been the only All-American in this booth, David, if I were allowed to put, have push passes <laughs> when I was playing quarterback. I'll tell you that. It is so hard to defend and so hard to seal that edge, especially when this guy's full speed ahead coming around the inside. And the big tight end, a lot of times that's a bigger strike zone, a bigger dude, and you can tell they put the hit on him, and that ball came out, and it came to the turf. Nice job playing physical by this defense. Better find the ear plug. Here comes the noise, backing this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. The quick out. He's run out of bounds, but he's got enough to move the sticks. It's tough on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you could do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. This Auburn offense doing work. They're set up with another first down. Going to run it. It's Hunter. Really putting together a threat now. They get the first. It's at the 37. And here we go. If you're an offense, you've got to get that ground game going so you can have some balance, and then you give it to your quarterback, Palmer, and let him make some plays down the field later on. 
Yeah, exactly. You know, coming into this game, this offense knew they were going to have to some way, somehow, at least establish a semblance of a running game for exactly what you just said. You've got to be able to use play-action pass later in this game to get some explosive plays down the field. And it's a play like that that we just saw, which can help them get that going. I, I like it. Just frustrate the defense. Get that five to six yards. Make them honor the run. Make them know that you're willing to run the football and run it effectively. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. Running to the left. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And a great job by the linebacker. You can tell, starting to crowd the line of scrimmage, get up there in the line of scrimmage, see it, diagnose it, get in the backfield, get the running back on the ground for the tackle for the loss. They're trying to eat up some clock here. Ninth play of the drive, it's third and six. Looking downfield, it's Thorne. Finds a soft spot in the middle. And they stop him just short of the stick. It'll bring up a decision on fourth down. He just didn't have a chance to get loose and make his way to that first down marker. And I think fans get upset sometimes. Like, run your route past the sticks so we get the first down. But nice job by the defense understanding where the sticks were and forcing the fourth down. He's got it. Showing off that big leg from 47 yards out. They were able to get a field goal on the board, and now they'll kick it away. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. That last drive fizzled out, Jesse. They had to punt it. Yeah, they did. And David, they're just going to have to do a better job this time around erasing the mental mistakes. And just trying to solve the defensive riddle, understanding what they're trying to do to you and attack them. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. quarterback on the keeper and this one will be stopped for no game yeah, and a great job by the defense holding the line of scrimmage playing downhill playing responsibility football making sure they shut down that option trying to pick up a first down third and long and he'll try to throw for it got the quick pass they make the stop, but this passing game does some damage, and they move the sticks with the first down. Hard work pays off, guys. These offenses work so hard week in, week out, working on those critical down and distances, third downs. And having that conversion this early in the game, that's got to feel good for this offense. And the Bulldogs will have it first and ten. Looking for a man. It's back. Get it out on the screen. They make the stop, but a good pickup there on first down. Uh, he didn't get a big game. You, you want to call that play and probably want to get more yards, but you could tell that was super close from seriously busting loose. Nice job running the screen, getting the ball to your playmaker. If he could just make one more guy miss, that might have been huge. They'll put the tight end in motion. He'll keep it himself. He gets it past the sticks, and Georgia has a first down. This quarterback is so dangerous, and it looked like the defense had him corralled. It looked like they were ready for him to keep the football, but that quarterback is just too good. He's like a water bug. So good, short area quickness, able to make guys miss, then go get the first. This Georgia offense moving quickly down the field. The give to the back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, there's a statement by the defensive line. First down play, expecting run, and they just dominated up front. Beat their one-on-ones, 
and force a tackle for a loss. They'll line up for a second down play. That's the end of the quarter, and Auburn has the lead. We've played one. Before we move on, let's have a look at the stats. Lots of time left, and we are ready to get back to it and open the second period. And here comes play number six of the drive. They go right back to it. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. I like feeding my guy. I like getting my running back touches, feeding the ball so he can break some of those big runs. But I'm also okay with these little ones. Set the tone, stay balanced. And you don't want to start this game with two straight punts. Big third down opportunity coming here. Didn't have much of a choice, just had to throw that one away. It'll be fourth down. And this is why you don't want to get in these situations. Third and long, defense knows it's pass. They're playing pass, playing deep. QB has nowhere to go with the football, so he just throws it away. Giorgio lining up to punt it away. He'll try to really get into this one. A fairly short distance here toward the sidelines. Not his best work. And Auburn is ready to go back to work on offense. They've got the lead here. Last time they settled for a field goal, but David got to find that balance between being aggressive and careful. And I think they'll take that. I got the lead, Palmer. I got the football. I got to take care of the football, put a nice drive together, and just get some kind of points on this drive. No doubt. Lots to be happy about right now if you're this team. I think for this one, though, on this drive, it's about finding the one-on-one -on -one matchups that are in your favor and then exploiting them. He's got it on the right. And a good job in coverage there as they stop it after just a few. It's hard to have success on wide receiver screens when you're facing press man coverage because your blockers out front oftentimes can't pick him up and that receiver gets gobbled up as soon as he catches the pass. You saw it on that last play. Offense gets set for second down. Wide out in motion. Quick pass on the jet motion. And they'll bring him to the ground after a short game. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. Dropping back, it's Thorne. Throws to the wideout. Can't make the connection in the defense, putting on the heat and forcing the incompletion. Auburn sends out the punting unit. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. He'll call for the fair catch here. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. They just didn't quite find the rhythm on that last drive, Jesse. They had to punt it. I think they got to be more fit. And down he goes back at the three. I tell you what, man. You, you better be looking at your puppy dog feet and seeing where they are, Palmer. You don't want to get back in that end zone and bad things happen when you get sacked. I don't know if you want to even risk this quarterback having to hold on for the foot to the football very much longer after watching that last play. This defense right now is pinning their ears back on this area of the field, and they are getting after him quick. The first down sack pushes the ball back for this long second down. Power football with the run. Gets him away from trouble. That's a pickup of six. Mark it at the 10. This running back just doesn't go down easily. It's just difficult for defenses to get him on the ground. Not a really huge, but if I'm an offensive coordinator, I'm going to continue to find ways to feature him and just, you know what, let his talent do the rest. Not exactly the ideal situation for this offense. Third and long, back up inside their 20. They're bringing heat. You know, as an offense, you've got to do a better job pass protecting. You've got to start thinking about max protection at this point in the game. Because if you don't get hats on hats, your quarterback goes down on his own two-yard line. You're lucky you didn't give up a safety.
Georgia sends out the punt team. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. So from his own end zone, the punt is away. He only needs a sliver of daylight. Not able to pop the big return, but they've got the ball back and ready to go with a fresh possession. Give to the running back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, he was trying to do it all by himself at the end of the day as a tackle for uh, I mean, the number of tackles he broke at some point, somebody's got to get blocked to help the guy out a little bit. Man, the defense was like a bunch of zombies on that last play. They just would not stop chasing that ball carrier. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. To the air, it's Thorne. Quickly to the tight end. Really nice pickup on that one as they get it to the 36. It'll be first down. Ever since they invented the forward pass, the tight ends have been running the drag and getting the first down. I think it's because the tight ends is so much versatility. You know, they can block and stay in the formation or they can release and come out. But either way, if the quarterback's patient, most of the time, that drag route's going to come in. Grab behind the line. It's Hunter. Yeah, and you see running backs in today's football. They play a wide receiver basically for you. But you got to find a guy that you can throw it to and you know he's going to catch the ball consistently. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. Got it behind the line. It's Lewis. He is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose yards on that one. Well, that receiver's looking at his teammates like, guys, what's up? You're not going to block for me on the screen? Seriously? I, mean, I just lost yards on a screenplay. How does that happen? Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. They're going to throw it again. He's got an open man. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. All right, second quarter, getting closer to the half. Offense is still having a lot of success, stringing some first downs together. Defense is going to need to figure something out before they get to halftime. Auburn lines up quickly. They'll run it in the red zone. It's Hunter. Not a whole lot of room there. Three yards, maybe. Second and seven. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. Back to throw, it's Thorne. Getting some heat. It's a fumble on the play. And the defense jumps on it, and they get that turnover. And he had an opportunity there to make something out of nothing, but things just got sideways and the ball came free. I just like the effort on defense, okay? They couldn't get to the quarterback initially in the pocket. He starts scrambling and they don't quit. You saw all the effort of everybody pursuing the QB, catching up to him and then creating the fumble. Awesome job. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. Last time, David, it was one, two, three, kick. The last drive, that three and out, sometimes that puts your defense in a bad spot, and you got to get a drive together here so you don't wear the defense out. I just think, David, too predictable, that last drive. they got to do something here to get this defense on their heels. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. On the move, it's Etienne. He hits that hole. It opened up for him as he gets six and all the way out to the nine-yard line. And runs like that are like body blows in a boxing match. Four, five, six-yard gains early turn into 20, 30, 40-yard gains later. They really wear down defenses, and they test their physicality. Looking to throw. A little screen to the running back. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. That is a time-honored way to slow down the rush, hit him with the screen, and a chunk play. 
Yeah, such a great job because you're flying up the field to get to the quarterback because everything looks like pass down the field. Let those guys get up the field, throw it right behind him. He does a little bit of the rest, making some moves, getting upfield, making the big play. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. The give on the inside. A little more space. Open up that playbook even more as they pick up the first down out to the 30. And those hairy dogs taking a bite out of another first down. You don't usually find Georgia teams that complicate things. They know who they are, and it starts with running the football, establishing the line of scrimmage. That's what the dogs do. Handoff from the gun. Finding a way to put that foot in the ground and get it up to the 37-yard line. Listen, I know that's not a huge game, but those run plays add up. They make you tackle the back every single play. Physically, you have to get some guy on the ground. It takes its toll throughout a fourth-quarter game. They can really be aggressive after that last play. It's second and three. Here's the handoff. And maybe they want to try somewhere else because there is nothing doing in the middle of this defense. It's an offense that takes pride in being physical. They try to get it going on the ground, but no gain on that one. Just nowhere to run. Not a lot of wiggle room for the ball carrier. This defense came in knowing that they had to match their physicality. Let's see if they can keep it up. Quick pass to the left, trying to get it to the marker. Good pick up there as he gets the first down. They'll mark him at the 48. When you're a playmaker like this guy is, your coaches are going to dial up plays intended for you, especially on third down. That's what you saw in that last play. There was no question where the quarterback was going with that football. All week long, they decided on the biggest downs of this game, we're going to target our best player and we're gonna make sure that he gets looks. It doesn't matter what the coverage is, and you saw it right there on that play. And the ball is free on the pitch. And they lost the ball out of bounds, and it'll be a loss of yardage on that one. What a nice answer by this defense. You give up the big play, you respond right back, you get the sack, create some momentum for your side. Nice job by this defense staying with it. This drive facing a little adversity now. A 10-yard loss leaves him with second and 20. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. I don't mind the run here, and I say that because it's second down and forever. And now at least it's third down and ever. Now you have a chance on third down to be successful. Not as predictable, not as many yards to get. I think that's a good call by the offense. Scanning the field, it's back. Works the middle of the field. Third down conversions are huge, and they've got one, and they're at the 35. The clock has reached the two-minute mark, and they have a chance to at least cut into this lead before the break. This first half of offense won't go on the highlight reel so far, but starting to get things moving, it's first and ten. He wants to throw. Setting up the screen. Across the 25, he's got room. And they finally get him stopped, but it's a big throw and catch, and he's down at the five. Perfect play call against the perfect defense. They came with a blitz, and the offense had the screen pass called at the right time. Running back gets it in his hands. He's got linemen out in front, getting hats on hats. You can't do it any better than that. This offense can get a jolt of momentum headed to the locker room if they... And with a hallelujah land! Touchdown Bulldogs! And I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead. You want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. I'll tell you what, eat that passing game up. You can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers.
They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point is good, and it's a four-point lead. Precise, relentless execution on that 13-play scoring drive. And the score comes on a five-yard touchdown pass. The kickoff team takes the field to boot this one away. He'll bring it out. It's Jackson. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Now here comes that Auburn offense onto the field again. They'll start this drive with a pass. Oh, he drops the football. He had it right down the gut of the field. Instead, it'll be second down. I don't know if the quarterback read the coverage properly on that one, but obviously the result is an incompletion. Still at their own 20 after that last incompletion. It's second and 10. To throw, it's Thorne. Got it set up on the outside. And that defense pushing him out of bounds after a short game. No screen plays. You really want to sell it. Get it to your running back and get him to the second level. Get him running full head of steam on a safety, on a linebacker. He almost got going, but just got tackled before he could really do any damage. On third and long, he has to throw for it. A strike downfield. Nice pitch and catch there, and they'll have enough for the first down. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown, but that was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm, and what better way than converting on third down. Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his progression. It's a first down. They'll stop the clock to reset the chains. Offense up tempo. They want to just keep throwing it. Got it in the middle. It's Lewis. Knocked down immediately, but a big gain down to the 45. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. Comes out throwing on first down. Grabbed in the middle. It's Burton. Really good surge for this offense. They move the chains, and he's got it at the 34. This receiver is such a weapon, and he has so much speed, and he can generate explosive plays for your offense, not just running go routes and post routes, but how about throwing him the drag, letting him catch it, and use his speed to turn it upfield. The Tigers will line it up on first and ten. Pocket starts to collapse. They'll throw it to the back on the screen. No siree, not this time. The defense was there and ready for that one. Sixth play of the drive coming up. On second down, they'll take to the air. And here's a fumble way behind the line. Defense covering it up and not letting the offense get it back. It's a turnover. And the quarterback just couldn't bring himself to pull the trigger and get rid of the ball, and they knock it free. So let's give the secondary tons of credit, right, Reese? They were doing an outstanding job at the back end in coverage, not allowing any receivers open, and that's why the QB had to keep holding it and keep holding it. That allowed the pass rush to get to him, and that created the turnover. Quickly complete. They'll finally drag him down, but not before he gets it to the 40, and it's a first down. The offense will have to use its first timeout of the half. They'll put it in play from the 40 on first and 10. Looking to move it through the air. Safe completion on the screen. And he'll step across the sidelines after making a good gain on that one. I'll tell you what, if you want to be overzealous, if you want to be a blitzer all the time, I like running the screen right behind him. Did a great job throwing the screen. Almost broke this one for a long game, but it just keeps the defense a little bit more honest if you want to start bringing a lot of pressure. Dropping back, it's back. Fires to the big fella. Makes the tackle right at the 28-yard line. Pick up a five, and they'll move the sticks. The offense will stop the clock and use one of its timeouts. Now on the move at the 28-yard line on first down. He's looking to throw it right down the middle. Oh, picked off. Got some room to run. And they come up with a big play to make sure no more points go on the board before the end of the half. 
timing has to be so good. When you're throwing at his own defense over the middle of the field, the ball's got to come out specifically on time because these windows close really quickly. Ball there thrown a little bit late as a result. It's an INT. Offense set on first down. He's going to pass. And they'll shove him out of bounds after the short game. Listen, running backs are not just running backs anymore. You're going to be a wide receiver in today's football. And a great job sneaking out of the backfield, getting the football, letting them get some positive yards. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. He wants to pass it on second down. Unloads to the wideout. Got his man downfield. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. Yeah, and the quarterback knew exactly where he wanted to go with the football. Had time. Spins the ball deep. Nice job by this offense. Understanding what the defense has given them and creating the explosive play. And it's first down, but they'll try the field goal in the closing seconds of the first half. Right down the boulevard, it's good. How nice is it as a head coach to have a kicker like this? It makes these decisions on fourth down so much easier. Just strut them out there and let him stroke it through the uprights. That late in the half field goal always gives you a little boost going to the locker room, and they'll need to finish off these final few seconds and not allow them to answer. From inside the 10, here he comes. And the coverage team able to make the tackle. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Then all the tradition and bad blood between these programs, it's all kind of come to a boil today in a spirited first half in this battle between the Tigers and Dogs. And I get it. A lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays. But if you ask me, it's more about how good you are on third down and how efficient you are in keeping drives alive. Those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how the fight between Auburn and Georgia plays out. He thought about bringing that out for a half second, but he'll take a knee and they'll bring it to the 25. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. They start this third quarter with the lead, but they might want to think about shoring up that protection. Yeah, the good news is you're, you're leading on the scoreboard. The bad news is your quarterback doesn't feel like it because you can't protect him. So, David, adjustments in pass protection, that has to be something they were talking about here at halftime. hundred well, percent. Just you, you can't get him hit that much. He's still doing a good job delivering the football, but if you keep hitting the quarterback enough, man, they'll start to see ghosts, they'll panic, and they'll make some of those mistakes. Now on second and short after that pickup. Back to throw, it's back. And that's going to fall to the ground incomplete. That was a physical matchup there. Third down coming. It seemed like there may have been a miscommunication there between the QB and receiver, just not on the same page. Went up top on second down. That leaves him needing a yard here on third down. Motion from the offense. Wants to throw on third. Time to take a shot. He's got it downfield for a huge game. And they were looking for a chunk play, and they got it. The explosive picks up more than 30. And a big reason why this team has the lead in this game is because of plays like that. They know they've got firepower throwing the ball. They've got the dudes outside that can make things happen. You saw it in the first half, and you see it here again early in the third quarter. He'll just keep slinging it. And he had it for a second, but it just dribbled out of his hands. 
Well, he did a good job getting to the middle of the field. That's where the offense wanted to attack on that play. He's just got to do a better job looking that football in. After the quarterback and receiver failed to hook up, they'll try it again on second down. Wide receiver shows motion. Throws to the tight end. Complete downfield. Finally run out of bounds, but he has his offense rolling with a first down. Sometimes your tight end's a safety valve, and sometimes he's your go-to receiver. And the offense knew right away it was the primary target. It was where he was going with the football, because you know you get a little bit of suck up from those linebackers with the play action, and you feed the big fella. Catch in the middle, it's young. They get it down to the seven on that pass play in prime position for a score. Our coach said you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. Operating in the red zone here on second down. One man in the backfield, and he gets it. He's got it down to the one-yard line right on the doorstep of Painter. Yeah, you start day one of training camp running your base runs. You need a few yards, you run these plays. You need a first down, you run these plays. You rep them over and over and over again. They're not sexy, they're not pretty, but in the end, they're effective, and they get you that new set of downs when you need them. They'll use the running game on first and goal. Just a solid stop by this sophomore. Great job of contained by this defense. And in order to do that, the end man on the line of scrimmage defensively has got to be able to set the point and force the football back into traffic. And that's exactly what happened. Can the defense stop them again on second and goal? He'll pull it on the read. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Really, really nice football play. Man, I got to understand option football. I got to play my responsibility, make sure that I know what I'm doing. Look at the linebacker. Great job doing that. Staying patient, getting to the quarterback, making the big tackle. Let's see what the offense dials up on third and goal. Back to pass. It's back. Just threw that one away to avoid disaster. Well, on third and short in field goal range, they dial up the pass play. Quarterback was trying to get through his progressions. There was just simply nobody open. Couldn't make an accurate enough throw. Ball falls incomplete. Now setting up a big decision here on fourth down. And they'll send out the kicker to try a field goal. Smashes it between the uprights. So after the made field goal, they'll kick it away and rely on their defense. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room and not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. And Auburn is ready to go back to work on offense. And in a low scoring game like this one, David, every possession is magnified. And I think more than anything, it just gets frustrating. And you got to put that behind you. You got to see what this defense has been doing to be so successful. Power, now use it against them. Yeah, David, I think for a play caller, this is tough, right? It's like you have to have the perfect play on just to get a first down. In these types of games, I think you're just trying to get guys out in space. See if a dude can break a tackle. Maybe that generates an explosive play and it breaks this trend. He's brought down quickly. Minimal gain there. Still a bit short of the first down. They're trying to throw the wide receiver screen to pick up that first down, but the defense just too much speed getting to the ball carry on that one. You make up the game plan and not a lot on the play sheet for this. Third and long from inside their own 20. To the air. It's Thorne. Fires to the wide out. Got his man! Really nice job there to pick up the first down and get it to their own 41. 
There's a reason third down is called the money now. What a great find by the quarterback. Great job finding his receiver. Uh, at the end of the game, you look at third down percentages, it tells a huge story, and it goes a long way in deciding who wins a football game. And the Tigers racing to the line in the hurry up. Off the play fake on first down. And they couldn't hold off the heat, and he goes down with the sack. When it's a play-action pass, that quarterback, he really has to sell the fake. He can't tell if his offensive lineman's getting beat right away while he's selling the fake. He had no shot. A first down sack can wreck a drive. Let's see what they've got on second and 14. Quick handoff. And the defense snows him under after a very short game. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it. And now it's just going to be a passing game. On third and long, try to convert through the air. Got a man. It's Burton. Major gaps in that defense, and he got loose, and they finally knock him down at the 41. That is just a perfect example of not deciding before the snap where you have to go with the ball. Yeah, because that will get you in trouble. You can tell right away. He wants to get the ball to his primary. He's covered. He comes off of him, does a nice job being patient, taking his time, hitting the drag route, getting the first down. Looking for room. It's Hunter. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And defense nowadays, they don't look at stats of what is the yards per rush. They look at how many negative plays they can create. Because why? Now you look at second down. Man, it just became very predictable for this offense. Nice job creating the loss on first down. His drive facing a little adversity on second and 11. Dropping back, it's Thorne. It's complete. They'll finally get him on the ground, but not before. He makes it to the 30 and gets a first down. It's really hard when you get in those predictable situations. Defenses are sitting on the sticks. Receivers have to understand where that first down marker is. Heads up play, nose for the first down marker. Get in there and get it. Auburn ready to go back to work after getting another first down. Give to the back. Not a whole lot of room as he gets a couple inside the 30 to the 29. That's a really good job by the defense, wrapping them up, getting them on the ground, take away that run game, make them one-dimensional, put them in passing situations. Really good job by the defense. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Defense a little too jumpy there, and they got into the neutral zone too soon. Neutral zone. Neutral zone. Defense. defense. neutral zone infraction will push the ball up five yards that defensive penalty was just what the doctor ordered for this offense it's now second and three fires to the middle makes the grab gets it inside the five down to the four and it'll be first and goal you know the defense doesn't have an answer for this slot guy right now and they may want to think about bracketing him having a defender play to the outside and to the inside probably some sort of zone coverage where you're trying to get two bodies forcing the quarterback to have to go somewhere else with the ball. Turning to the running game on first and goal. He pushes it forward all the way to the two-yard line. Now second and goal and right in the teeth of this noise. They'll try to run it in. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And with the stuff there, Jesse, on second down, this little third to mid-range, you got two downs. What are you thinking here? Maybe getting your quarterback out on the perimeter and giving him a run pass option. See if you can get the defense in a bind. You can't hear yourself think on third and goal. They're going to run it. And with that one, they jump on top here in the second half. Mono e 
Shimano, the offensive line gets it done, driving the defense back, creating an easy lane for that running back. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point puts them up by a field goal. Precise, relentless execution on that 13-play scoring drive. And close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team out there getting set. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. And to settle for the chip shot field goal last time, Jesse, they'd love for this one to pay off bigger. Yeah, it just comes down to execute. And that defense gets to him, and down he goes at the nine. Oftentimes with play action, you're asking the quarterback to hold on to the ball a bit longer, and you're asking this offensive line to hold up and pass pro a bit longer. Against this athletic front seven on defense, it's going to be tough. And they're trying to dig out of the hole on second and long from the nine. Hand off from the shotgun. Knocked down after a pickup of three to the 12. This defense has kept them backed up. Now one more stop and they can get off the field on third and long. He's looking downfield to throw. He'll try to do it himself. Open space at the 25. And he's brought down after a nice game. Man, that's so frustrating. That happens so fast. He just pulls it down. It looks like pass. He pulls it down and he's gone. Just like that, chewing up yards. So much speed, so hard to stop. They'll put it in play from the 27. First down. The give to the tailback. Defense fills those gaps. He's got one to the 28. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. They make the stop after a gain of three to the 31. How bold will they be on third down after that last run? Looking to throw, it's Beck. Trying to get to him. And he just throws it away. That is not what you're looking for on third down. Fourth down coming up. Georgia lining up to punt it away. He's getting a lot of work. Fourth time he's punted tonight. No return coming. He'll call for the fair catch. Now here comes that Auburn offense onto the field again. Jesse looking to take it down the field for back-to-back -back touchdowns. I think it's really important for them moving forward, too, to have a lot of balance, right? You want to be able to keep this defense guessing. Yeah, and you got me searching for answers after that last drive. You stack another drive on top of this, their defense's heads are going to be spinning all over the place. As they get set to snap it, just about to reach the end of the quarter. And he was hit just as he released it, and it falls to the turf. Really nice pressure by the defense, getting in there quickly, getting a hit on the quarterback, making the quarterback make a quick decision, and he makes the wrong decision. He throws in the double coverage, but that's really because of the pressure in his face and the physical hit on his body. 
Just enough time for one more snap before the end of the quarter. And they get him on the ground, and that'll probably do it for the third quarter. That's the end of the quarter, and Auburn has the lead. They're sitting in a strong position here with the lead. Let's take a look at our game summary. Not only is the scoreboard on their side, but so too is time as we open the fourth. Auburn's going to have to send out the punt team. They'll look to pin him deep. And they'll get him down after the return at the 27-yard line. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. Leaves it with the running back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Linebackers have such an amazing responsibility. Got to play run, got to play pass. How about this? Seeing the run aggressively, getting downhill, and getting in the backfield and making a tackle for a loss. After getting knocked back to open this drive, it's second and 12. Looking to throw, it's back. Throws to the wideout. Complete in the middle. He gets those chains moving, gets it out to the 42-yard line. Well, these wide receivers work the middle of the field. So much of this is field. Understanding where the holes are in the zone or understanding how to get leverage on a man. And these wide receivers are dangerous nowadays because they do it so fast and see that so quick and make those plays over the middle. Movement here from the tight end. Looking for room. It's Etienne. Runs through a tackle. Really nice, patient job to find some running room by this junior. First down, physicality wins football. He's being able to run the football and create balance. And, and right here, just chews up another first down. Gives you another chance to maybe continue to run the football. And I feel like this guy, too, is just an explosive play waiting to happen. His vision, his quickness, and he's got a burst. If you give this guy just a crease, he's going to hit it. And right now, he's doing... The offense coughs it up. Picks up the ball and tries to make something of it. Well, ball security doesn't just apply to running backs and receivers. QB's got to keep two hands on the ball as well. And they're very lucky after that fumble that the offense jumped on. Second down after the offense recovered its own fumble. Wide receiver coming across in motion. They'll go to the ground. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Great team defense on that run play. Everybody doing their job. People winning their one-on-ones, D linemen staying in their gaps, linebackers and DBs filling. You just can't do it better. They'll come to the line at the 42, facing a third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a bunch. Nice defensive play to get a hand in there and knock it away. And now such a tough situation. Late in this game, you're trailing, but now it's fourth and long. Like, it's one thing if it's fourth and short. This makes it even more difficult. you got to have something dialed up you feel really great about. Georgia sent out the punt team. They may have to pay him overtime. He's punting for the fifth time today. Fair catch called for and made. And Auburn is ready to go back to work on offense. The last time we saw this offense, we had to look quick. It was a three and out, Jesse. He just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. On first down from their own 22. They'll try the run. Oh, what a cut! What a good run there. He has enough for the first down. It's a point in the game, I think, as a coaching staff, where you really challenge your offensive line to go win the football game, right? We've got to lead late. We're going to run the football. And the defense and everybody in the stadium knows that's what's going to happen. Can we run the ball down their throats and impose our will? That's what this offense right now is trying to do. Quick release by the QB. 
They make the stop right there. Good pickup. It's still short of the first down. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly. That's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. Takes a handoff. It's Hunter. The Tigers get it past the sticks. And I don't care if I get it by 2, by 20, by 30, by 40. I just... I just want to get the first down, understanding the situation, understanding where the sticks are. Doesn't have to be sexy, but I got to make sure I get to that stick, get to the first down mark. Here comes Auburn to the line on first and 10. To the ground with the back. It's just simple, simple first down run, showing your physicality, setting your offense up in a good spot. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line, second and seven. To the air, it's Thorne. Looking to the big tight end. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. They are finding soft spots in this defense. He's got it down to the 25. Well, how about the offense setting that play up? We've seen earlier in the game a couple shorter throws. They're just trying to suck those safeties closer to the line of scrimmage, anticipating that they would get an opportunity to take a shot. They called the perfect play at the perfect time right there. From the gun, the running back tries to hit the hole. And the defense doing a great job committing to the run. When you commit to the run like this, obviously, you can give up some plays in the passing game, but you got to stop the run first. They've already peeled more than three minutes off the clock on this drive as they stand over the ball on second down. Unleashes one deep. And the throw and catch was good, but you got to do it in the field of play, and he couldn't quite keep that foot in bounds. Nice job by the defense there, taking all throws away from the quarterback. He had nowhere to put that football in the field to play, so that... And let's hold on just a minute here as the officials are going to have a second look. And you know the standard is indisputable video evidence, and the officials will change the call. And the extra point extends the lead to double figures at 10. A 67-yard touchdown drive there and close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. Just about set to kick it away. And no chance at a return here. They'll start this drive at their own 25. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. They'll come out on this drive and let it rip. Not much of a chance there. He just had to get rid of it to avoid the sack. Last incompletion leaves them still sitting at their own 25 with second and 10. The offense showing motion from the tight end, trying to get a read on the D. Wants to throw, it's back. Not able to hook up there, incomplete. Come to the line, facing third and long from the 25. From the gun, wants to pass. And the pressure gets there. And down he goes at the 18. And listen, the quarterback drops back, and he's going through his progressions. We see zone, but just couldn't do anything about it. This defensive line, this pressure, getting to the quarterback, getting him on the ground. Down in the fourth quarter, it's too late for empty possessions. They'll go for it on fourth down. He'll try to throw and pick up the first down. Oh, and he gets downfield for the big catch. He's off to the races. Touchdown, Georgia! And once he found open space, the band might as well start playing. 
Well, we wondered exactly where the momentum was, and it looks as if Uncle Mo might have switched sidelines and switched families. And momentum is such a big thing. It's such a real part of college football, isn't it? You can just feel that right now. It just felt a few minutes ago like this game was over, and all of a sudden, this team, they're believing in themselves. They've got some win. They've got some hope. Their defense now needs to get the football back to keep that momentum going. He'll try to tack on one more. And the PAT will draw them one point closer. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they finish it off with a scintillating big play. 83 yards on the touchdown pass. The kickoff unit about to go to work. On the move from inside is five. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. Now here comes that Auburn offense onto the field again. Pulls it, fired complete. And just a short, safe pass play. They pick up a few. He's just winning that matchup in the slot every time. And when you put him in the slot, Reese, he's closer to the quarterback. It's an easier throw. We can run in, we can run out, and really take advantage of his versatility of a guy in that slot position. This offense has a second down play. The back goes in motion. Off the play fake. He's going to let one fly down the middle. And it's taken away by the defense, and they desperately needed that turnover. And he's going to run it all the way back. Touchdown, dogs! How about that play by this defense? The offense trying to salt the game away with the lead. Defense makes the biggest play of the ball game, getting the pick, finding the end zone, and taking the lead late in this ball game. On to attempt the try. And the extra point is good, and every point counts. It's now a four-point lead in the fourth. They're about to kick it away, and the defense probably can't wait to get back out there after the pick six. And it'll come out to the 25. No attempt at a return. And Auburn is ready to go back to work on offense. Well, the good news is they threw a touchdown pass last time. It was just to the wrong team, Jesse. Well, that's an unfortunate part of the game for quarterbacks. But guess what? They do have it. So you've got to be able to turn the page here and lead this offense. Well, I think you know this defense is going to be aggressive. They're going to jump routes. They're going to play aggressive. You've got to take advantage of that. Maybe use that this time to your advantage. Got three on first down. It's second and seven. Pulls it on the bootleg fake. They're trying to get to him. And it's incomplete. It was wild high and wide on that one. And how loud is it in this building? This is crazy. This, these fans are going absolutely nuts. And I used to love when the fans got involved. And I'm on defense because it messes with the snap count. It messes with the communication. And it can really rattle an offense. Looking downfield. It's Thorne. Pressure coming. Had to get rid of it quickly. Another incompletion on third down. One possession game. You have got to be able to give your quarterback an opportunity to survey the field. He didn't have it that time. Got hit. It affected the accuracy, and it falls incomplete. Auburn sends out the punting unit. Fourth time tonight we've seen this guy come on to punt. Not going to risk a return here. He'll make the fair catch. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. Running back searching for a hole. Tackle was made at the 28 after a pickup of three. Small game, I know. But again, the defense knows he's going to run the football. He's willing to run the football, not just drop back and pass. Make him honor the run game. you got to do a lot of this. 
After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. He's looking to throw. They get him on the ground after he gets enough to move the sticks. He threw that one with some serious heat. This senior quarterback doesn't need a lot of space to get it in there. They've got it at the 37. It's first and 10. He wants to throw. Feeling some heat. And the defense gets to the quarterback. It is hard to continue to get up and get up and get up like he has being sacked time after time again. But this QB, this offense, they're undeterred. They're continuing to put drives together. And most importantly, they're winning the football game. They'll probably bleed every second possible off this clock before they snap it. Off the bootleg, looking to fire. Fires to the right. How about getting the foot down on that throw for the big completion? And man, this quarterback has had a day with that pass. He goes over 300 yards on the day. Really nice job executing, putting up some yards today. Pretty good day for the young man. They've got a good chunk of ground to cover on third and long from the 41. Back to throw, it's back. Unloads to the wideout. It's caught downfield. Boy, the defense really needed to get off the field there, and they just couldn't do it, and it's a fresh set of downs. Man, that hurts. When you're trailing late in the ball game, you need those stops, and you get them to third down. You get them to those critical points. Now they get the first down. You don't have many left. You better get aggressive. And the dogs are marching down the field. Gets him down at the 26. Big play there. Give him 15 yards on the game, and they move the sticks. You know what's interesting? At this point of the game, with the lead in the fourth quarter, the defense is expecting them to run the ball, and because they're putting so many guys close to the line of scrimmage, they're taking advantage, throwing it. Two straight completions now back-to-back. -back. The Bulldogs with the first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. The clock is on their side. Defense uses a timeout quickly trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. you got to believe they just want to run it, take care of the football, and keep that clock moving on second and nine. One back in the backfield, and they'll give it to it. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. We've got a timeout on the field, a tight game in the fourth, and the Brain Trust will go to work. On third down, going up top. And he can't get it off. Taken down. What a huge play this late in the game. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. So here we are on fourth down, and this field goal kicker is going to face all the pressure in the world. It's good, and that was dead solid perfect. Well, that's a huge kick right there, because now the opponent has to score a touchdown here in the fourth quarter. That put so much pressure on the opponent. Nice job by the special teams going out and executing a big move. So the kickoff team is out there ready to boot it away after putting up a field goal. Let's see what the defense can do. And he takes this from inside the five. And the returner is stopped. Now here comes that Auburn offense onto the field again. These are the games. These are the moments. This is the opportunity for the finish that people remember in rivalries like this one. And those highlights that are shown for years and years to come. These big-time moments, Palmer, coming down to the wire, who steps up and makes the big-time play?
And this is why you lift the weights in the offseason. This is why you do all the gassers and all the sprints. For moments like this, game on the line in one of the biggest games of the year. Looking for a man. It's Thorne. They get to him as he throws. Soft spot in the middle. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. You know, you just can't coach toughness in quarterbacks. This guy's been sacked multiple times in this one. And on that last play, he gets drilled again, but he delivers a strike. I'll tell you what, this, this guy's going to be in an ice bath after the game. He'll come out throwing on first down. Dumps it to the back. Caught over the middle. It's Hunter. And it is a chunk play. A huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. That's what's so scary about this offense. They've got guys in the perimeter that can change the game in one single play. And you saw it right there. Too much speed on the perimeter to create that explosive play. Trying to get everybody set with the clock still running. To the line quickly. They'll spike it to save some time. And now on second down for this offense. He's looking to throw. Got him downfield. They make the stop at the five-yard line, but they've got it first and goal. You know, you're seeing in college football now with spread offense and tempo and air raid. We're seeing more and more 400-yard days, but I can't remember the last time I've seen one look as impressive as this guy has played today, David. He has been on fire. And it's so annoying now because all the quick, quick game is so good. And then you take shots when you get matchups. And you see tight ends now that, that move like wide receivers and running backs that move like receivers. There's so many ways that quarterbacks can hurt you now. And he showed all of it today. These fans raising the volume on second and goal. Looking to throw its thorn. And he'll chuck it into the cheap seats there and save the down. Nobody getting open there. Well, obviously, here in the fourth quarter trailing, they're going to be throwing the ball, trying to get back in this game. Couldn't come up with it there on second down. They're expecting him to throw it here on third. This crowd knows when to bring it. On third and goal, they'll throw it. And it's in. He was looking to the end zone and trying to get six. After that incompletion, there is so much pressure now on this quarterback to come up with a big play. They need to score a touchdown. They need to keep this drive alive to have any shot at winning this game. But it all comes down to this play right here. Trailing and getting deep in the game. They'll go for it here on fourth and goal. Snap in the shotgun. And they get to him and sack the quarterback. And they'll stop the drive on down. Running out the clock seems to be a mere formality here as they are ready to snap it in victory formation. And it looks as if the offense will just take a knee. 